What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mike's Tool Shed. This is an episode I have been very excited to do for several weeks now. Um, I had a man from Vito Pro Pack contact me and uh, seeing if we could work something out, if he could send me something for review. And uh, I really thought after the um, soldering iron multimeter video that this was never going to happen. I thought I kind of screwed the pooch on that one, but uh, we went back and forth, a bunch of emails. He was very thorough in all the questions he asked me, and I asked him some questions. And uh, in fact, one of the last emails, email correspondence, I asked him is if there was any kind of um, any kind of guidelines or anything you wanted, you know, if he wanted me to highlight or maybe leave out. Because um, I said one thing is that you know I will accept something that a company is willing to send me, but um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do commercials for companies. That's something I never wanted to get into. You all know the guys that do that, and if that means another company's not going to send me stuff because I won't, you know, guarantee a favorable review, then I don't want to deal with that. I just can't have a straight face and lie about something. I hate those videos, and I don't, I don't, and I didn't want to be a part of that at all. And he said the perfect answer, and I was just kind of trying to feel him out because he could have said the wrong thing, and I would have been like, you know what, this might not be right. But he said, you know, when we do this sort of thing, we just kind of let people do whatever they want. Um, we don't want you to hold back at all. If you see any need, any room for improvement, go ahead and say it. Um, and that's that's coming from somebody that has faith in their product. You know, if and that's what I really wanted. I wanted companies. I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might bust some balls. Like, if you're gonna send me this, I'm gonna be honest about it. But if you have faith in your product, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So let's get into it. I'm just. I can't wait. I, I just want to get this over with so I can take this in the house and sit on my living room floor and play with it for like two hours because I'm excited. <clears throat> um, first, let's just go around the outside. You got these rings everywhere. And uh, here, I have a little cheat sheet here. They include this little pamphlet, which look at this. They have their little handle up there, just like a lot of their bags do. And um, look, look a little, a little Velcro strap right there to keep it closed. A little high quality little pamphlet. Let me read some things off to you. 80 interior and exterior pockets. Um, outside mounted stainless steel clip for uh, tape measure right there on the side. Stainless, I think, um, let's see here. Okay, magnet. I think almost everything on here, uh, that's not stainless. That clip is stainless. Though. Rivets and stuff, they just look like some kind of uh, coated steel, nickel, maybe nickel plated steel. All right, so we've got um, bit extension pockets, two large storage bays, which is you got a big pouch here and you got another big one here. Um, you've got waterproof base, three millimeter thick polypropylene, which is referring to this big, easy, hard plastic polypropylene, rather. Uh, the base to it, which really is is a problem I've had with my other bag because it just has four feet on the bottom, and uh, it doesn't have much of a structure to it. And it, like I'm on my second one of those bags, but like the other one, the whole thing kind of leaned and it doesn't like to sit up and it falls over all the time. So I'm hoping this will do a better job of that. Um, weatherproof body fabric, 1800D nylon. I, not, I don't know what that is exactly, but I can tell you this feels tough. It feels like it's tough material, and it doesn't look like there's any room for a whole lot of damage to happen here. Got triple stitching all the way around here, double stitching on these straps, little leather accents. I imagine they added these pieces of leather on the top because maybe uh, through R&D or some uh, some some returned products maybe uh, they had a problem with that so they got these little leather bolsters on the top big thick plastic handle with a big rubber part there big thick uh, nylon attachment point what else we have extra <laughs> right here extra wide padded should strap clips onto the handle they got a little typo there but that's referring to the shoulder strap that goes from side to side it actually clips on to this top bar right in that little space so you can clip the shoulder strap out of the way it's not dragging on the ground or, or less likely to get hooked on something and then a five-year limited warranty which I should have probably figured this out more but they're calling it a five-year zero downtime warranty 
my guess is that you just all you have to do, this is my guess, but um, is maybe just send them a picture of your damaged bag, and I'm thinking you don't have to send yours back in immediately. They send you a new one out right away, and they give you time to send their theirs back because I do know that they have um, to, a program for tech students where they offer a discount with your student identification, and uh, you can either buy a new one at a discount or they'll offer you like a cheaper refurbished one. So I think they'll take something that's damaged and rip it apart and fix it and put it all back together and then sell it to tech students, you know, so you can get your foot in the door with a quality bag. Um, they send you a nice product catalog. You got this nice little pamphlet. Uh, this is all the warranty information. You got to activate it. You get new product updates. Oh, look at that. And, you, and when you, and you um, sign up for it, you get a free bottle wrench. Which is like a little clip bottle opener thing. That's cool. Uh, and they have like zipper lube and, you know, with proper maintenance that this should last you the five years. So let's get into it. Let's go all around the outside. I mentioned uh, the leather bolsters here. These D-rings all over the place. Huge zipper pulls. Big beefy ones. They even have their insignia on it. So I don't know... If these are like third-party zippers or they're their, you know, own custom zippers. But just tons of stitching. Another big-ass D-ring. You got a uh, stainless steel clip here, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. More D-rings. You got this big pouch here. Little zipper pouch there. More D-rings. All of this bottom is all riveted to that plastic base. And then you got a couple little pockets over here. Tape holder. Big ass D ring. I guess that's where the um, that matches on both sides. So that's where your shoulder straps go. So let's get inside. I can't tell you just the overall impression. First impression is that the the fit and finish is great. This thing feels quality. And my theory is this does have a little bit of weight to it. I think this thing, I think this thing weighs like around 10 pounds. My theory is that if it's heavy and expensive, it should also be good. Um, this does retail for about. This one particular bag, I think, retails for $220. So it's more expensive than your big box store ones, but, um, you know, hopefully it is designed and it is the quality is up to the price. You don't want to pay, some, you know, a lot extra for something and it have not it not be better quality. But I don't, I don't think that's the case. So um, on the outside over here, you have about a pencil case size pocket here. And then you got a little shallower one, the same width. And then you open it up. And this is a this is a feature that it has that I don't think I'm going to use a lot. Where you have these uh, male snaps here, female, female, and female. So you can actually, if you wanted to, you can snap this in the open position. I don't know what real advantage that is for me personally, but it's on there. Also, you can even snap it down further into another roll. And there's that, that bottom one, so you can keep it all tucked up. It's pretty cool, probably not something I'm going to use. And on this side, you have, start here at the bottom, you have a little opening here, and I've already tested this out a little bit. My impact, and even this big bulky uh, husky thing, fits down in there. Now that is going to smash these pockets in a little bit and going to limit you, so if you load these up, this might not fit. That is why I've got this bag preemptively, because that bad boy fits right in there. Perfect. And actually, I bought this is another brand, but uh, they do make stuff like this too. Let's get those things out of there. Um, you have tons of these little screwdriver pockets down here. And you have another tier that's eh, about that deep. <laughs> I can fit my whole fist in them. And of course, the more the bulkier thing you put in this pocket, the less you're going to be able to put in the one behind it. But I mean, that's with any tool bag. This, I could fit my whole hand and wrist in there. Those are all evenly sized. So these eight, these four are the same size, these four are the same size, pretty uniform. And you got one big pocket over here that's a little bit smaller than these. And then you've got some other medium-sized pockets that I believe, let's try this out. Perfect for a level, things, things of that size. And you have these little tiny, this is like a neoprene, um, like a wetsuit material almost. It's just real stretchy on its own, unlike this stuff that's not very flexible. So you can shove little things in there. Let's see if I have anything 
laying around. Never fit in there. Maybe. I mean, this is kind of a stretch, but maybe you can get a little flashlight. Okay, that's not. That's a little too big. But uh, I don't know. Little bits. Yeah, I'm probably gonna put my Phillips 516s, my little nut driver bits. Maybe I'll jam full of one of them, full of my uh, little tapping drill bits. And then you got a bigger pocket up here that goes all the way down to this line behind that. Um, over here, you don't have anything, so your taller things you could put there, and you're not really going to be blocking anything off. So, spinning around, um, you got a two finger pocket there. That would be good for the flashlight. Perfect for a flashlight. A couple sharpies right there. Um, on this side, you have this big pocket right here, which I don't really know what I'm going to put in here yet, but you got a big. You see down there a pretty decent size opening right there. And you got another full depth pocket there, a full depth pocket there that's like half the width. And then it's a couple shorter pockets right here, and then these little, you got more bit holders down inside here. Um, also, you have this clip there, so, you know, I have a problem with keys. And uh, I'm probably going to be putting my car keys in there, nice and safe, locked up, not going to go anywhere. You have that little clip. And also, this is adjustable, so even if you don't use these pockets and you just shove big stuff in here, you can you have this adjustable strap and you can cinch it down tight or you can have a big fat thing in there if you would like up here um oh this is this is deep this goes all the way to the bottom of this you can put a bunch of stuff in there let's see this might not fit but oh wow if you had to i don't know if it's gonna zip but 12 volt impact does fit all the way down in there but it won't zip that's not a problem because i plan on keeping that on the inside and I like, this is just a personal thing, I liked all enclosed bags, one for weather, two for sticky fingers. Um, I like that there's not a whole lot of pockets where you could just, some douchebag could just walk by and pull something out of your bag, gone, you didn't even see him. At least this, you know, somebody's got to have some more balls to actually unzip your bag and go in it. And you can, you know, it takes, you got to be a little more brazen to do that. So I like the enclosed bag. Open this side up. Uh, this does not have the fold down snap feature like the other side. That's okay. That's not something I don't think I'm going to use. You got this big, beefy, really nice shoulder strap. Like that's this thing's probably going to weigh about 40, 50 pounds when I'm done, maybe give or take. Uh, all loaded out. So you want a really comfortable, comfortable shoulder strap. And this thing, I'll tell you what, I I would pay like 25 bucks just for the shoulder strap. I just did a little test on my shoulder. It feels pretty good. I'm not really going to know for sure until I put some weight in it. But here's that little clip. That clip clips right onto the handle. So once you have these attached, you can keep the shoulder strap tucked up out of the way up on top here. That feels like it's a pretty decent plastic. Like that's uh it's flexible. I don't think that's going to have I don't think I have any problems with that part. Now this side you have this big full length pocket up here that's as deep as this uh, stitched reinforcement right here. And in front of that is just a little open pocket that's more of that neoprene flexible stuff. And then you have another one, smaller one, or shorter one over here, just as deep, just not as wide. And then you have more of these little pockets you can barely get your finger in so you could keep something small. Uh, very tight in there. I'm trying to find something. I don't really, I don't have anything handy that's going to, look, you can put an air gauge in there if you like. <laughs> but it's, the, the flexibleness of that pocket's going to hold it in there. So you got those two pockets, this big full length pocket, and then you've got these bigger pockets. So there's less like uh, screwdriver type pockets and more big tool pockets. This one, I can almost fit my fist in, but that goes all the way down. All these pockets go all the way to the floor. This would be good for some channel locks or maybe... Maybe some, maybe that's kind of a waste of space. Putting them around, that's better. You know, you can put some, uh, they're all about that size to hold a pair of uh, tin snips. These are all the same. This one's a big fatter one. This one is a little bit uh, fatter. And these four, these two are exactly the same. These two are about the same size, only they're more of the flexible neoprene, I think it is, kind of wetsuit material. You got that. And then you have two more pockets down here that are really fat. Um, let me see. I wonder if, like, 
Now that'll fit in there no problem. You know, maybe that's your style, but I plan on just kind of having this down in the bottom like that. There is room all the way in the bottom here. You can just put something long. I think you could put a hacksaw down here maybe. Let's try that. Yeah, stuff like that you can just shove right down in the bottom there. You do have some room. Um, although I did retire this plastic case, that would fit down in there, but I didn't like that because that's going to limit what you can put in these pockets. You have two little pencil holders over here, and that's about it. It's simple, and it seems pretty versatile. It's got a good variety of size pockets in here. Um, I think that's about it. I told the, I told the man that I was going to probably do three videos on this. This one, um, maybe in a couple days, a week or so, once I get this thing all sorted out with my tools in it, I'll do a new tool bag tour, plus there's going to be some new tools in it that you all haven't seen. And then maybe in six months or so, I'll revisit it again. You know, I'm tough on stuff. I'm, I'm very hard on everything that I own. So maybe in about six months, we're going to see what kind of beating I can put this through. So um, I'm not going to take it easy on it. It looks, it feels tougher and sturdier than my uh, the bag that I got from Home Depot. And uh, I'm really excited to use this. Um, I had, I've been look, I, I knew about this company before I was contacted. I had looked into their tool bags, but uh, at the time that, that when I was, uh, before I bought my last bag, this was a little too expensive for me to buy then. It, uh, I, I don't know, I just didn't have, I didn't have $200 to spend on a tool bag. And uh, I just cheaped out and bought another $35 bag, which is already starting to fail on me. And I've only, I think I've had that one about a year now. Um, and I'll go, in the next tool bag tour, I'll show, or maybe the, the, the long-term review of this, I'll show what my other tool bag went through and where its weak points were and kind of compare them a little bit. But uh, that's it. This is the Vito Pro Pack Tech XL. Um, let's just take a look at their catalog real quick. Oh, this is 17 minutes now. And uh, they make all kinds of these tech bags. They're really perfect. They're perfect for HVAC technicians. Um, I, it, it's, that's the example they give a lot, but I only really have, as, bu as far as bulky tools, I have this um, and my meter. And uh, I'll show you what I'd like to get for my meter. They have backpacks. Um, this is the Tech XL. That's the one. that You can see there it is all loaded out with tools. Get an idea of what you can do with it. And then they have the Tech LC. I'm not really sure of all the ins and outs of all these. Two different Tech uh, backpacks. They got these open. These are good for electricians. I see a lot of electricians carry these. Like I said, this to me invites people just to walk by and grab something real quick. Um, whereas, you know, people are less likely to go and open something up to get. Here we go. Here's this bag that I want. Now, if I can confirm that my, uh, my new fluke meter will fit in this one. I'll get this, but they actually make a taller one because I know those, um, what are they, field piece meters are very tall. So I might get that. And both of these have a clip on there that I believe matches up with this stainless steel clip on here. So you can actually take this bag and clip it onto the side and almost make a little standalone um, kind of uh, troubleshooting bag. You know, you don't need this whole thing for troubleshooting. You only need a couple hand tools and a meter, so that is, uh, I believe that that bag is in my future, whether I gotta buy it or or what, but that's definitely an addition I'd like to make. Um, yeah, some HVAC tech stuff. These got these tool pouches. These are, you see these, and uh, electricians carry things of this style a lot. This little, uh, you know, carry-all cargo pack, they call it the grubber. Um, they just, I mean, I, if you can't really find what you need from these guys, then... You need something really weird. They make these pouches, which I didn't know that they made before I bought the one that I have. They're, they're, they're getting really popular on job sites. Uh, more of these pouches. See-through pouches. That could come in handy. I haven't seen that before. Uh, some testimonial stuff. And then you have, like, the XLT. That bag's freaking huge. You know, just uh, a good, well-rounded line of products. And I'm really, I'm really not trying to juice this up. I'm really excited about uh, this bag and this company. If, if Believe me, if I didn't, you'd hear about it. But uh, they make good quality stuff. It is all, you know, it is all more expensive than the stuff you're gonna find at the big box stores. You got these like Carpenter. I mean, you can, these are just big open pits. You can use those for 
masonry or carpentry or, or framing or any of that kind of stuff. Oh, you can get logos put on them. They'll put the logo on there for you. Look, these guys. These guys all look hardcore with their backpacks. <laughs> so, that's it. The Vito Pro Pack Tech XL. I'm really excited. I'm going to go sit on my living room floor now and play with this thing for probably probably longer than I should. I've got some stuff to do around the house, but i got to get this just right before I take it to work tomorrow. So, that is all. Till next time, you will be seeing this bag again. And, uh, as always... Thanks for watching.